zero and it would still just be a whole lot. You know yeah, so, yeah. So. It, it's not really massive with the massive pullbacks that he had. I mean, that was expected. It was just there. So it was expected. So I'm not really bothered about it. I mean, let me just quickly run through it before we check some. Before we check what we're gonna do today. So uh, when we went in, we went in on the. If I'm not mistaken, we went in on Monday, 29th, right? 29th of 06. So somewhere around here we went in, yeah. So it did a, a move up, and then it's just gonna consolidate. It's gonna do all of this till about here on the seventh. You understand? Know so I'm just trying to get the early entry, and so I went in already. But here is the move, so that's why I'm not really, you know, shook because look, that's what exactly it's doing. The consolidation, then you're gonna have that boom up move. You understand? Know so I went, uh, I think it was Cotland I was talking to me and I was like, don't be scared. You know, it's just what's going to happen. It stopped exactly on the 200 moving average, bounced back down, retrace, it's going to touch the 50 and ideally go back up. So I'm not really, that's why I'm not scared. If I didn't see this, I'll probably be scared. You understand? So, <laughs> and so for me, Boeing is still, you know, the buying move, at least once it leaves this zone, up until 19th, I'm not expecting a pullback. And even if it does a pullback, I don't expect it to go back here. You understand? So whatever it does, even if it does a pullback up until the 19th, it should come to 200 for support. So whoever is in it between here and the 200, this 450 pips margin, you're safe. So by the time it comes back, it will test the 200 then start leaving that zone. So I'm expect I'm suspecting once it gets here, that's when the pullback will be. And then it's probably gonna pull back to somewhere around this area right here. And then we should see the breakout towards the upside. You understand? And then uh you know, okay, let me actually just draw that so it's more understandable. So let's say price will come to the 200 moving average, bounce back to around here. This 20 moving average will be somewhere around here at that time. So it's gonna use that for support. It's gonna probably do one more bounce back like that and then set up a fresh new high so all of us that are in between here and here are safe so we don't need to worry or struggle about this you know around the section about it so we good all right that literally covers uh Boeing. looks like we can still get an entry between um monday and tuesday before seventh yeah if I mean, it, that, on the seventh yeah on the seventh right here you can get entry i mean you were saying it's gonna fill up the gap right the gap that he has yeah. but keep keep in mind boeing doesn't really fill up the gaps most of the time mm. you know what it takes a while to, to you know to fill up that gaps because there's always gaps every time in this market yeah and not just that you know gap here gap gap here you know gaps here was not fill up gaps here not filled up not filled up so eventually you might fill it up but that will be in the future so that's why i'm not worried then this yeah. consolidation was totally expected, so I'm, I'm keeping a calm mind. That's why I don't even talk because I don't want to be talking about it. You understand? Because I have to then keep reassuring everybody don't be scared. Nah, nah, and there's no need. There's really no need. Yeah. You understand? I mean, we all know the business we're into, and right now the market is very, very, very weird. So, you say that's one. There's one though that I'm looking at, you know, I'm looking at um, Amazon. And what I noticed about Amazon is Amazon might have a dip. You know, Amazon has been climbing and it's been climbing and it's been climbing. But Amazon might end up having a dip around the 23rd. You know, 23rd, 24th of this month might have a dip and then we can ride back. So that's what to look into. And then, um, and then there is a Airbus. I want to check this Airbus because I'm not sure what this Airbus is. Um, I know it has an update, but yeah. Yeah, so Airbus, if anything, we can go into Airbus from tomorrow. This is just purely seasonality, by the way. Um, let me see. Uh, so Airbus, let me try to get. Holy God, what the heck happened here? I didn't even look at this. Okay, it's not that big. It's just 32 pips. All right, let's go to Airbus for a second. Um, Let's just try to find what Airbus is doing. That's not what I want to look at, by the way, but I just want to quickly grace through it and see 
you know, see what he's doing and see probably what what might happen to Airbus. Because the the planes are back open, right? Like within Europe, so so that's one thing, you know. Oh God, what am I looking into? This is not Airbus. This is right here. Yeah, the planes are back open, so this is one thing. So it dipped on the eight, twenty uh, third. On the 25th of 06. Let me just check on the 25th of 06. Did it dip? Not necessarily. So, from the look of things, right, Airbus is meant to be going up from the 6th. Now, I personally, you know, um, I don't have any other information to back this. I'm much safer within the Boeing, but Airbus is something that, you know, is also something that we could, you know, we could take advantage of because looking at the structure itself, it's done a one, two, three structure. So let me just quickly just pull this out so you see what I'm talking about. So it's done this. And I don't really use this when I trade, by the way. I'm just not a big fan of using the one, two, three structure, but it's just one thing that I've seen. So, you know, they also call it the AVC. Uh, well, I don't really, I'm not really bothered about those stuff, but it's just one thing I've seen. So the, the structure is like, you know, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. So what I can see is this, right? You know, when you draw your trend lines and you have that points of conversion, so like you have one, two, kind of like three stuff like that, like price comes here first, hit the second one, then on the third one, you take your buy. So that's basically what's done here, but on the horizontal level. So let me just highlight that for you. So this is position one, position two. Now what's gonna happen is, it's gonna do it on position three. So position one is here. So price left that zone, came back, retest that structure, left, came back, test position two, we left, left that structure, but actually, Position two didn't hold, so he broke position two, but consolidated. So what I'm expecting is price leave here and come back and retest the third one right here. And here should be your entry. Somewhere around here should be the entry for that. Now, that might be a little bit confusing to some people. I mean, so I'm just going to take out this three line, just that, and I'm just going to do like support and resistance. So right here, this is first level of support. Second level of support is right here. And third level of support is somewhere right here. So what happened was price, the main reason I chose here is right, price couldn't break through right here. Price had like that return right there. So price has tested the first one. Now, ideally, I don't recommend going in after the first test. You don't wanna go in, you wanna go in on the second one, so which is here. So price did the second test and then left that zone. And everything is always the zone. It's not just our entry. So the zone in this case is 69 pips. But when you understand, you don't need to go in once price hit the zone. You can use your PZ on a 15 minute time frame and look for an entry. So when price came back, dipping into this section, let me see. Right here. Uh, let me just see. First zone, second zone. I'm gonna get things into perspective here. So when price left that zone initially was, oh, I can't really see much, let me, okay, that's a while ago. Yeah, so when price first left that zone was here, it came back and retest the zone. So on the second one, for example, if you were going to go in, you will have gone in here at the entry from the PZ right here, you know, bought it and then locked yourself in profit. And when price seemed to not break through the third zone and keep coming back, the second entry would have been here, but uh, you could have got raided. Now, you don't want to use the PZ by itself. There's other indicators that you can use, and I've uploaded that from the last two or three webinars ago in the indicator section that you can use to confirm if that's really a buy or it's not a buy. But let's say you went in with just PZ, your stop loss would be here. Whatever you've made while you locked yourself in here should counteract this. Don't have multiple positions if your account can't hold it. You know, there's no point. You only trade this this time around when price leaves the zone. 
And in this situation, when price left at this point with 11 pips, your stop loss should be right here. If you use the full indicators that we have, it's most likely gonna nullify this entry for you. But let's say you took that entry and put your stop loss right here. You got rated about 13 pips, which is not bad. You went in right here again. At this point, you should have locked your 13 pips into profit and cancel that out. And if you go rated here one more time, oh well, you understand, like that's the game. But as I said, with the indicators that you have already, you shouldn't be getting all this one. Let me try to see if I can load it up uh, right here so it makes more sense. Mm. Let me try to see. Shut the one. If I do that now, it's going to delete this lines. So let me just load up um, here, so this, in this scenario. So I think we're looking around here. So if, for example, I think the first entry was here when I said, you know, if it had rated you. So as you can see right here, it didn't give a buy. It's still a red zone, so you wouldn't have gone in at all. This would be where, this would be your first entry when you have gone in. It gave you about 10 pips, but you would have got rated that. So that's nullified. Your second entry, let's check. Did it escape? It narrowly escaped right here. So it was in blue at this point. So you wouldn't have gone in right here. Right here, you would have gone in, which then you got rated. And let's see right here. You wouldn't be safe right here neither because right here, it gave you a buy around this point, but you wouldn't be able to go in. So you will have got rated just at least once in this scenario. So you'll be waiting for your buy. So what's going to happen is I would still recommend using this, basically this structures that you have here with your indicators and only go in when all the sign gives you an uh, entry. And so let's find a good one and it gives an entry. So let's say you're selling down, for example, right here is a good one. Uh, it gives you a sell entry right here. This is red. This right gave you one red and red right here. And then go in for that hundred or some pips. You understand, you know, places like this. So you got the blue right here gone in right that right here you got the blue 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 you go in right there right here you go blues you go in your stop loss is below here and you can see that fine movement when you get that fine movement and then you get the entry then go in but when you get choppy movements like these you should just stay away you understand it's just like common sense you don't want to be going into the market when the market is choppy you want to go into the market when it's smooth and the question is how will i know if the market is smooth just when you start seeing a breakout level. So when price breaks out from a structure like here or like here, so this is a consolidation region right here. Price is bouncing right here. And um, once price breaks out of that region, wait and see where your entry was. You got your first entry right here, but if you look at this, this stuff right here, it nullified it so you couldn't go in. So your ideal first entry will be right here, keeping you safe. Price didn't even pull back at all at you. You know, you're safe and locked in. So basically, mix your technicals with your fundamentals and you should be fine. So in terms of Airbus, we're going to be trading Airbus um, tomorrow. You know, it's a risky one, but we'll take it. The people that are on Boeing, let me see. Uh, we have uh, Jordan. Jordan, we have you here. Nice one. So if you are trading Boeing, don't exit your Boeing trade. It is natural. What's happening right here, it's meant to happen. That's why I told everybody, check your seasonality. You understand? Don't panic and leave. We got in early. The main reason I went in is because I want everybody to go in early right here around this consolidation. The pullback that we had was from the 200 moving average, which was here. Uh, we just moved that away, which was here. And that's natural. Price is trapped. So price is going to break away. And the confirmation is right here on the seasonality. Uh, right here, we went in around here. So price is consolidating now. And the breakout will happen between the 7th. So seven to two days from now, so on Tuesday. So if you're not in by Tuesday and price leaves the zone, you're gonna be in trouble when this pullback happens. So you don't wanna be in the you don't wanna be, you know, going in after Tuesday because when you go in after Tuesday, when this pullback happens, it's gonna raid you. And don't forget, we're going for the long move right here. We're going for at least, uh, if I'm not mistaken, we're going for at least a thousand pips plus, about one thousand six hundred pips. So. If you're in at this point before price reaches this 200 moving average right here, you know, once price reaches 200 moving average right here, even if it bounces back, it won't raid you off. Or you can take off your profit 
and you can try to slide it down a little bit, but I won't do that, I'll still hold, but you can try to do that, you know, slide down a little bit and then follow up. So whatever you have on your Boeing, hold on to that Boeing, you know, and then Air Boss is something we look into getting in tomorrow, but only use your technicals to get in on Air Boss, and you should also use that on your um, Boeing as well. So now, today, I want to talk about gold, right? Today, the main thing I want to really talk about is uh, gold. And the thing is, at this time of the year, gold normally goes up. Now, gold has tanked. If you guys notice, gold has done a whole time high. Like, literally, in years. Gold hasn't been where it is now in years. So, let me just pull this to a monthly so you can see what I'm talking about. See right here, the last time gold was around this area was in 2012. You understand? 2012 was the last time gold saw this price level. And gold is about to be an all-time high now. It's literally, if if everything goes according to plan, gold is gonna go beyond two thousand. Literally, gold is gonna be going totally way up. And the main reason I said that is this: if you look at gold seasonality, right? Anytime there is, you know, there is chaos around the world, gold tends to go up. If there's threat of war, gold goes up. And I just literally verified this year that if there's a pandemic out there, gold literally goes up. You know, people are scared. It only just makes sense. People look for a safe haven when things are going south. And according to seasonality now, even though the coronavirus is not all totally out yet, I mean, the states are suffering a lot more from it. So what's going to happen is we're going to expect gold to keep going up. And if you look at this date on the 7th, from the 7th right here of this month, normally gold goes up. It's going to go up all the way till September. So if this really happens, gold is going to set a new high beyond what we expect. You understand? So in which we can ride it up and then ride it back down when September comes. But in order for us to do that, we have to, uh, you know, be prepared for it. So this week, after trading, you know, we're going to be trading Boeing on Tuesday, Airbus probably from tomorrow then gold also looking for gold opportunities from tomorrow tomorrow is the no from tuesday actually uh on the seventh we'll be looking for gold buys from the seventh now let me show you something this is totally against the rules that i normally make you understand and we have to just adjust the way the market is right now right now if we look at the co2 report for gold it doesn't really look like i said it's favoring the longs it's favoring the shorts more look there's so many people going short on the market but there's still uncertainty around the world and for that reason i'm going to be sticking with you know buying gold i'm just going to be sticking with gold for now i don't want to shut it because the pandemic is not out there but you can see the graph from the co2 report it's shooting down you understand but there's still some buying power left in there now let me check let me just quickly check probability because i haven't checked probability on gold you know but I would still like to trade gold. Regardless of how it is, it's very tempting right now to not trade gold. So I'm going to be holding the, the, the Boeing, getting some on the Airbus, and then getting into gold. So um, we're in July now. And uh, July 7th should be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. The fifth trading day, right? So on the fifth trading day, that's what we're looking at. So I'm not going to trade gold on the fifth trading day, which is... Um, the seventh i'm gonna be trading gold from the eighth right here so that's the sixth trading day i have a 87 percent chance of a buy 62 percent chance afterwards and then the 75 percent and 62 percent so i have four days literally from wednesday all the way to next week monday you know to trade gold without having any fear you know what I'm saying? not much fear anyway so what i would what i recommend is the same old thing this time around, we don't leave our technicals on the table. You understand? We have to go with our technicals. And uh, what I'm going to do is we're going to trade gold. We're going to buy gold. So what I want to see ideally on gold is this. I want to see gold pull back. You know, pull back towards the 20 moving average, if that's possible. You understand? If it's not possible, then uh, you know at least it should pull back towards the 50 moving average on the four hours. Then I'll be looking for a buy signal. Now, a buy signal consists of this. Let me just pull this template back out so you guys can understand. So, a buy signal consists of this, right? 
when price hits the 50 moving average right here, right? Showing around here. And I'm going to just pop into the 15 minutes. And I just marked that zone out. So when price hits that point, and um, where's this stuff? And when price hits somewhere around here, and you can see price left the zone, so price hasn't retested the zone. So when price hits here, and I get a buy signal, you know what I'm saying? If I get the buy arrow, and it's in a blue section, and this is green, that's only when I buy. There's no need of me rushing, because this is also going to be a long-term move. That's the only time I'm going to be buying gold. You understand? So we buy gold, and I, you know, our stop loss will be below the buy uh the buy signal so if, for example right here if it is on the tips you set it right here you can go in as low as you want we go to, even if you go in with 0 0.01 what you notice is gold is so heavy and volatile that you're gonna get uh, a massive return from it anyway so so if your account can go just 0 0.10 you know with, with what we estimated to get i don't know a specific how many pips we're gonna be getting but let me just check if we don't have that on uh you know uh let me just shift that to a monthly for a second so at least we should see a new high on gold so at least we should be getting about a thousand pips off that 1400 pips so 1400 pips on gold and uh, boeing 1600 at least 1600 on boeing so i'm just gonna add that up one six plus one four hundred and um Air boss, I'm not really sure about this one, how, how big it's going to go, but you understand? But I shouldn't expect anything less than around this zone on air boss. You understand? So in, in that scenario, we're just expecting about, it's not that much, about 480 pips from, 470 pips on that plus 470 pips. We should be taking around 3,470 3, pips from just this trades alone. Everything goes good, we take in that off the table. And with this, if you have 0 0.10, that's 3,400. And obviously if you have one lot, so if you times that by uh, 10, that's how much you're taking off the table. So if you spread one lot between all of them, this is how much you take off the table. So this is the time to get serious guys uh, with the trades because definitely Boeing is gonna move. You understand? I'm not really bothered about boring at the point at this moment. So all this pullback is doing. So far, you don't over leverage your account. You'll be perfectly fine. You understand? Just follow, just follow the the signals that you get, and um, don't over leverage. Obviously, use a stop loss when you can, but your stop loss shouldn't be anything above the 50 moving average. It should be way below. I would say right here it should be where your stop loss is below this zone. Because I don't see price coming right there anytime soon. So price is trapped on the four hours on Boeing. So whatever you have on Boeing as a leverage, only if the market gaps down. If the market doesn't gap down, you'll be totally fine with Boeing. And in Airbus, you know, find an entry, a good entry with Airbus using your technicals. And if even if you look at the technicals right now on the daily chart, you know, it's just giving you a buy signal right here. Somewhere around here, it gave you a buy signal. So price is just retesting that buy signal. So that means we should be seeing a buy move coming in on Airbus very soon. So once the market opens on Airbus, you know, try to look for a good zone to go in and get that buy on that Airbus. And then gold, you know, wait for gold to pull back on um I'm just gonna wait for gold to pull back on uh, what's it called? Uh, 15. Let me just put on 15 minutes. So pull back to around this area. I won't just jump in just because gold is testing around this zone. No, I'll wait for the buy signal, make sure that it's blue and make sure that it's green, and then I go in and put my stop loss below that. And that's basically it, guys. Um, that's just what we we're doing this week. So we have gold for a buy, we have Boeing for a buy, we have Airboss for a buy. Okay, that's all three. Is there any questions? Uh, yeah. <clears throat> yeah, what's the minimum lot size for Airbus? It depends on your broker. Some brokers allow 0 0.10, some brokers allow 10 lots for minimum. It depends on which broker you're using, to be honest. Some brokers don't- I'm on access. FX Pro. Uh, I'm not really sure. I'm not really sure because I never really, really traded um, uh, stocks with FX Pro, but if if it's at the top of my head, I think it should be ten lots. 
You understand? I think it, okay. should be 10, it should be 10 lots to trade on FX Pro as well. Some brokers allow um, 0 0.10. Some is 10 lots, depending on what broker it is. So with the 10 lots, now the, um, the thing is, okay. the, the 10 lots is equivalent to 0 0.10. Don't get it you know, mixed up. On FX Pro, for example, if, if the minimum is 10 lots, it's going to be equivalent to 0 0.10. So if you're trading 100 lots, that means you're trading one lot. So it's nothing to be scared of. If you try to trade 0 0.01 oh, okay. on any stocks, I presume you're not going to be able to enter the market because it's too small. So depending on your broker, it's going to be between 0 0.10 and uh, one lot or 10 lots. Yeah, 0 0.10, one lot or 10 lot, that will be your minimum to go in with. And that's just equivalent to 0 0.10 in any broker that you go to. The minimum is okay. I I have a question. Uh, I checked on the Boeing and the standard lot was written as one. If you go to the properties of the uh, share, whatever it is. The, 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 uh, what did you say was? Boeing. If you go to the properties, uh, properties. of the, uh, yeah, no, no, in the market view. Uh, market view. Yeah. If you go on properties of Boeing, it says one lot minimum one lot so minimum. i was so, confused yeah. whether it's so, uh, zero, one lot or 0 0.01 now nah, so your your one lot will be equivalent to 0 0.01 so let me just uh so yeah yeah specifications uh, so yeah contract size, it is. One. contract size one yeah so yeah. yeah so you'll be fine it's just the same thing it's the same thing as 0 point uh, what's it called now look minimum volume is 10 okay right here look at it right here. minimum volume 10 so your minimum volume will be 10 lots it's not going to be one lot it's uh, not going to let you know one lot. yeah so basically what is telling contract size so it's one you have to buy one share of it and don't forget because you're trading this like forex you're actually buying the underlining assets you're not really buying the assets itself so it's like you're borrowing a fraction of it so uh, rather than you paying 180 for it you know to to trade it which normal people in, in, in the stock market would pay for it you're buying the underlining so your minimum lot size will be 10 lots and that 10 lots is equivalent to just like 0 0.10 that one i can understand. okay all right you understand? everyone me when so i was training where do you prefer yeah where do you prefer for the stocks which broker i mean it depends so i use something called think or swing I have that account. So I have the Think and Swim, Swim account. So TD I'm a trading. I have that. And also I do have the Forex one. So whenever I feel like I can use my Forex XM account, for example, and trade this, or, you know, I can use uh, the options. So I can trade it as an option or I can trade as a, you know, as Forex, whichever I feel like, to be honest. Okay. Because I'm still trying to get the hands of the, the options, you know, um, I think a few weeks back, I was telling people like, you know, you gotta trade options. But the, the options is totally different from Forex, how we trade Forex. I'm still very more comfortable with the Forex side rather than the option side. So the option side is something I'm still exploring. But I already have that account for, for trading in, in terms of, um, what's it called? In terms of trading options. So if anything at all, I, I, will, I would recommend you trade it the way you're comfortable with now. So when you have a lot more money to play with, you know, in your trading account, then you go for the options. Ideally, what I want to do as time goes on is to move us, if you're going to be trading stocks, to move up into option trading because the return is higher than when you trade it like Forex. But in the meantime, just to be safe and secure because with the options, once you're in, you're in, basically. You have an end date of the contract. Um, and what that means yeah. is that if you come out before the maturity date of the contract, you end up, you could end up losing a lot of money. You understand? And sometimes the upside to winning is limitless. It's unlimited. If the price keeps going up, your money just keeps increasing higher and getting, you get more for what you've traded in. While if you get it okay. wrong, you could also blow your account and options. So you understand? So in that respect, I would recommend you should still trade with your Forex broker in the meantime. And then we could do, uh, we can move to E-Trade later on, or we can move to Think or Swing. You understand? So depending on yeah, what okay. it is, well, I'm you. still exploring that at the moment, trying to just get my mind, you know, fully wrapped up around it. And once I get that in, and then I can actually then pass on 
their knowledge to everybody else. Okay, but if you guys want to explore it, please feel free to do it. I recommend you be very careful because it's something that, you know, it's totally different from what you know now, basically. Right here, this is like simple stuff. Right there, it's literally advanced stuff. So, yeah. Is there any questions? Any oh. questions? No, that's all. Thank you. Okay, beautiful. Uh, does anyone else have any questions? No, everything seems good. Okay. Uh, I think, Jordan, I um, think, I'm not sure. I think you were saying you were scared of uh, Boeing last week in the chat room. Oh, I think that was, that was Cortland. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, don't be scared, guys. I mean, there's no point. No, scared. yeah. That's why I didn't want to say anything, because if I do, I kind of reassure you, you know, and what, what tends to happen is whenever you're trading by yourself, if you don't get that reassurance sometimes, that could damage the way you trade. So you have to soldier it, you understand? And you guys have the tools anyway. You know, you can pop onto the website and check for tools and be sure of, you know, what you're getting into. Just make sure you use it. It's right there for you. There's no point having it without, you know, and without using it. So when you have it, use it. Uh, oh, Definitely. I, no, I, yeah. The Forex is Excited reality. For the yeah. It's going to be good. Beautiful. So the forex seasonality as well is something that I'm looking into as well, getting more of this on the on the, on the website. But um, you know, in the meantime, with the stocks that we're trading, just make sure you pop onto it and check what's going on. Um, I remember I was telling you guys about the five G stocks that we're gonna be looking into. You know what I'm saying? That's another one I want us to look into. I'm still trying to get, you know, uh someone to compile the data for me on that one. Now, once we get that true, that's gonna be on the website so we can know exactly when to trade what 5g stocks and all of that stuff they haven't been there for long so most of them have been there from 2008 2009 so about 11 years of data but even if we use that 11 years wisely we'll be able to find specific sequence in, in the history of the of that, that specific stocks but um when it comes to boeing don't be scared this is what we're going through right now so around this place we went in, in on the 29 if i'm not mistaken and we're going to have that consolidation up until the 7th, which is on Tuesday before price moves. So between tomorrow and Tuesday, we should see the movement of price. So, so that's what's going to happen with Boeing. In the meantime, you know, hold on to what you have. And then Airbus, you know, look for something to go in on Airbus. And gold, you know, take gold easy and go in on a buy on gold. Understand? Now, with the gold one, let me let me just put it to you guys. This is very high risk. This is like literally risk of the risk. I don't like trading like this, but since Corona is still out there and there's, uh, you know, uh, you guys heard about swine flu, right, in China as well. So, you know, things like that is still going to keep driving gold up. And I'm, I'm, I'm thinking gold is going to get to a new high this year. So for that reason, it's just best, you know, to close your eyes and just go into the trade and take the trade. If it goes good, you come out with a big reward. If it goes bad, obviously you have a good stop loss in place and you can use the Boeing as a kind of like a safety net. So even if it goes bad, you still take massive profit from your Boeing and possibly Airbus, you know, and just uh, use that to enjoy the ride. But if all three goes good, we're looking to take at least 3,470 pips off the table. And if you have just one lot on that, this is how much you're going to get. And if you go crazy on that, you know, if you times that by 10, that's how much you're going to get. So depending on what you want to do, it's up to you, but don't go massively if your account does not allow you to do so. You know, if you have a three figure account, it's not wise to go, you know, one lot. Just stick to zero point, you know, zero point something, zero point zero something, maybe zero point zero five or zero point zero six, depending on what figures you have. If you have five figures, you can try to go at least a, a whole lot, you know what I'm saying? So in that situation, only risking about 200 pounds or something like that, or $200 in your account, you understand, depending on what you have at any given time, you understand? And, um, you know, if you have like, uh, I don't think anyone in here in this chat room has a six figure account. So it's probably on the five figures that you guys are on. So in, in, in that situation, but if, if there's anyone here that has a six figure account, you know what you need to do. I don't need to tell you, you already know. For you to go to that size, you already know what you need to do in terms of your lot size. So, and that's basically it, guys, for this week, uh, this week's webinar. So, if you guys have any questions, always please feel free to pop it into me uh, on um, what's it called, uh, Telegram, or you could just give me a call. You know, I'm available for a call if you want to speak to me. You know what I'm Obviously, don't call me like uh, 11 in the in the middle of the night or something. But you can call me between, you know. <laughs> 
<laughs> nine and six, you know, uh, it's fine. All right. All right, guys, thank you very much for attending today. And, you know, stay safe. There's corona out there. Stay safe. Keep your family safe and secure. God bless you guys. And also, do not over leverage your account. Do not over leverage. Please, whatever you do, stop loss. Don't over leverage and follow the indicators. Don't, there's no point thinking too hard. Just follow the indicators. Let them do the work for you. Let them do the heavy lifting while you just, you know, rip the reward for it. Okay. All right. Thanks a lot. Hi, guys. Thank Take you. care of yourself. You're welcome, man. Take care of yourself. Bye.